guys. I looked at the car and there is no clear path for a chain. Um, plus, this is the right, what we're looking at right here is the right, <laughs> it's the right wheel. At least in my car. Different cars might be different, I don't know, but this is the right wheel. So the way I drew the chain is going toward the front of the car. And yeah, the tie rod... I, I wouldn't say the tie rod's in the way, per se, on my car. Uh... But... I don't know, it's very complicated. What I think I would have to do is 3D model the whole thing. I'd have to 3D model it and figure out what I gotta do. But I think it is possible. I think it is possible. But different things have to be moved around to make a, a path for the chain. And I actually think the chain's going to be coming down. Because th it turns out this joint is like way up there, almost at like shin level of the driver. If you sent the chain directly uh, off of this toward the back of the car, it would be inside the cab of the vehicle. Well inside it, like almost like running like just below my legs, like it, my legs would be straddling it. Which is wild. Why didn't I look? I mean, I thought these were diagrams that were accurate. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm going to do, TXT. Um, it's just going to be a real challenge to design the easiest path for the chain with the, the least amount of work of avoiding critical components like for example if I wanted to go through part of the frame of the car and cut away the frame and put the chain through it I've got to reinforce that frame some other way um, if I am cutting into it in any way the chain's going to be passing either over or under certain things or through certain parts. So it it's going to be a bear, really. It's going to be tough. But I think it's doable. I'm not going to not going to give up or anything. Oh, guys, it just hit me. Um, you could have the sprocket here. Or let me show you guys what, something I could do. I'll draw it on paper. Okay. So, like... You got this coming out, and then, I don't know, your CV joint starts, and then it's like a hood, and then it comes through. And you got your sprocket here. Now, there's a bunch of crap in the way everywhere you go, but I could put the chain going like down. And then put um, another sprocket here. And then have that come this way. And have another sprocket here. And then have the chain go back. 
So in that way, we can actually move the chain outward to avoid a lot of stuff that's all up in here. So you just come down and then out. <laughs> what do you think? That's doable, right? So, you, I mean, it may not be specifically like that, but the point is, everything then doesn't have to be in line with this. You have the ability to ship things over by simply having a bar separating two, and then you can move now in the X direction. So we're moving down in Y and X. And then Z would be, you know, going toward the rear of the car. But the X direction shift is nice because that you might avoid some critical component that was right here, maybe. So that's just something to bear in mind as a trick to ensure maximum flexibility um, when establishing a a line of sight for the chain to get back to the rear of the car. That's going to be the hardest part is just getting that chain to get back there without having to completely redesign the the car wheel system and and whatever. I mean th there's a lot of stuff everywhere down there. When I laid under the car it's like holy crap these diagrams you see are so much more simplified than when you actually lay under the car. There's stuff everywhere. That joint where the wheel leaves the differential is surrounded by stuff. In this picture, it looks all empty there, like nothing's in the way. Van is that far from reality. I mean, it's just packed with crap all around it. There's barely any room for even a sprocket around that hook that hub where it leaves the differential. See if you go right through the the firewall and into the car you run into the problem of uh, that being right where your gas and brake pedals are. You can't go through there. Plus then you're losing your firewall. You don't have a wall anymore. There's holes in the wall that means the fire goes on you. Well, the, the easiest line of sight would be to go right through the firewall and go right under the driver's seat. But, like I said, that would definitely interfere. I might be able to... I don't know, man. It's going to be tough. I really feel I have to 3D model in software the entire underside of my car, take measurements, come back and forth, walk in and out of the house, and create an actual Maya 3D model fully, and then make it all transparent, or semi-transparent, so I can see everything, and then I can design the, the pathing of that chain in a way that's least detrimental to the structure of the vehicle and the frame of the vehicle integrity and least detrimental to all safety aspects like the firewall and cutting into anything and try to come up with the the least problematic pathing for that chain but man there's not a lot of ground clearance at all you can't just come down with the chain and then run it underneath the car th that easily Unless if you raise the floor pan a little bit. But I already wanted to raise the floor pan by putting batteries in the floor pan under the carpet. I mean, this this is all just so tight. I feel like it'd be easier to convert like a pickup truck, which rides high from the ground. There's so much room to work with. With, with this modern car, everything's just squished together and shoved as low to the ground as possible for better handling and every there's no room for anything it's gonna be a very difficult job uh, 
Yeah, it wouldn't have a path straight down, but if I came down a little bit and then out and then down at like a 45 and then turned to go along the bottom of the car, I think I could do something like that. Possibly without even changing anything, but it's going to be real close. <laughs> real close. <laughs> it's going to be rough. And any time you change the diameter of the sprocket from the diameter of the original diameter, you're actually changing the forces involved. So that impacts things. It's going to be rough, but we'll figure something out. We have to, unless I'm going to give up or buy a different car to do this on. But I really want to want to do it on my own vehicle. Yeah, I'd want I'd want all the sprockets to be the same. I guess if you went big, small, big, the big to small would increase the RPM. And then going back to big again, I think they might neutralize each other. So I'm not sure how that all would play out, but you have to be careful and, and yeah, <laughs> you just got to be careful, whatever. A lot of counter shafts and sprockets to get to the back. Well, I think the more you put, the worse off, because that in includes more friction and more... <laughs> fabrication to put each one on and each one has to have a bearing and a, a mount system and everything so you want to keep that path as simple as you can but that's just I, it might not be simple it might be simple I, that's a matter of uh the design I, I i want to try to keep the design as simple as i can but it's gonna this is gonna be tough way harder than i could have ever imagined good grief I mean, just looking at the diagrams that I found of just pictures, a lot of them were simplified compared to what I'm seeing under my car. That's why I was gone for so long. Yeah, it's embarrassing because, like, all this stuff, I'm visualizing that joint being nearer to the ground. It, it's way up in the engine bay where that joint comes out. It's knee high in the passenger area. It's nowhere near the bottom of the car. And I was failing to see that when I was planning this. I just, I can't show any of this because of that. It's just... <laughs> you can even see in this picture, this chain's going to go right into their seats. It needs to come down and pass under this metal part of the frame right here. It needs to come at, at a 45 degree angle down and then turn. You can already see it. Uh, Which means we're losing a I just realized, TXT, you could actually put a CV joint onto one of your... What What have you been calling them? Uh, counter shafts. You could make a counter shaft have a, a CV joint on it. Oh, you need two. I don't know, that gets too complicated though, but I was just thinking like if you needed to have the shaft bend in more than one direction. So you could have 45 degree angle changes. Yeah, that would be an option. I consider that, but I really don't want to build any gears or drive shafts. I much prefer to stick to all chain, because I feel like chain sprocket stuff is easier to make than gears because gears then need to have a housing and cooling systems <laughs> and run to your your radiator for oil cooling systems no way i don't want all that whereas chains you never have to deal with that just chains running on a sprocket it's all like self-cooled it it doesn't involve those types of concerns so you've got your differential here and this shaft comes out of the differential and it has a sprocket around it. Okay, so we got our sprocket around the shaft as it comes out of the differential. Here's our CV boot, and then this will go all the way out and then come to the wheel. We're looking at the driver's side front left wheel, as you would see it if you're laying down on the ground with the wheel to your left and you're laying and you're looking up at it. So I saw this part but you you have to there's like a wheel knuckle coming out here and then like the wheel turning column coming here which goes to the rack and pinion there's all these things happening there's something coming up here 
there's a lot of joints. So you need to be able to thread. Originally my design was to have the chain come directly back to the rear of the car where it connects to the motor. But there is no direct channel. That actually goes through the passenger cab, through the firewall, and it'd be going just underneath your chair. Your legs would be straddling it. It might interfere with even the gas pedal and brakes. You, you can't be coming directly back. This is way too up high. This is almost knee level to a passenger. You need to be able to drop the ability for the motor from the back of the car to access this. It needs to be dropped below the, the floor pan and outside of the car in the bottom of the car. So we need to come down in Y direction. So first we have our sprocket here coming off the part of the differential that then leads to the half shaft and this is our CV joint. So our sprocket here connects to another sprocket with a chain and so that will that will be turned and then this sprocket comes through a metal bar to another sprocket and then the chain comes back and this this then goes all the way back to the rear motor. Um, so this is the two chains going all the way back. Okay. Now, we need it to come down in Y and out in X and toward the rear of the car in Z. So if we, if we were to come directly out and down, this would be drawn here, but it's also moved toward the rear of the car in Z in order to thread its way through all the other components that would be in the way of this. There is a way to get this through with the correct angles. And the only way to do that was to put a CV joint here and a CV joint here so that we can move, we can move this second sprocket's location anywhere we want. We can move it to here, 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 anywhere we want. And we can make this shaft length as long as we want. We could swing this however we want and then mount it with hinges and bearings to make it stable in one area because a CV joint can move in any direction while still translating the rotating motion of this shaft. Just like this CV joint which leads out to the driver's side front wheel can rotate in any direction while still rotating the shaft and it can bounce when the car bounces. So all the same things will apply here. And so this CV joint can be wherever we need it to be. Um, because it's going to be a CV joint and a CV joint mounted right outside a sprocket and a sprocket. So that will look like this pretty much. Well, shoot, it'll look exactly like this. The same as this. So a car's normal CV joint, it's a housing, and then you got your boot, and then all the bearings are inside the boot. And we're going to have it the same way. We're going to have a housing and a boot, and we'll weld the sprocket to the outside of the housing. So it's going to be identical to this. We'll be here and here. The same setup that gives the same amount of flexibility and the ability to, to tie a sprocket welded on to the housing to a chain. So that's how we'll bring our chain out, down, and backward toward the rear of the car in order to thread it through to avoid all the components surrounding this joint which is tucked way up in there and surrounded by stuff everywhere we needed to get it around the firewall under the firewall to the outside of the car and then hugging along the outer frame of the car right near where you jack up the car where the jack point is that's where we got to bring it and then we'll go back so that is the key and that's the part I was missing when I was just um, creating the prototype uh, in my head using videos I wasn't visualizing how much crap is in the way and just how high up the differential is. I didn't realize it's like knee height to it compared to the driver. So that all made a big impact. Um, when I was learning about the differential I was looking at a rear wheel drive differential and that's way below the drivers. Um, but a front wheel drive differential is up knee high almost so that that needed to be accounted for in the translation of a chain up here to a chain down out and back and that's where we want it so we're just moving everything out to here before we go to back to the rear of the car to where the motors are so that's important and that's utilizing all that new technology with 
how um, CV joints works that I just learned. Thank goodness I learned that and I can tap into that. Now, do I need to make a CV joint now? No, I don't need to make a CV joint. And the reason for that is I can just buy a CV joint as if I were replacing the CV joint on my car. You know, that's a normal bolt-on part you can buy. And it's already self-contained. And you can see that the oil inside that does not require external cooling or lubrication. It's already pre-lubricated and it's inside a boot. And that's a proven system. So we don't have to worry about cooling and lubrication, cutting our own teeth and stuff. We don't have to deal with any teeth. All this is just ball joints rolling around in a really clever system. If you really want to see how amazing CV joints are, look at a teardown of one. It's so cool. Um, and that is the key. Having a CV joint, which is already amazingly engineered. And you just put a couple of those and you can move your sprockets wherever you want and that shaft will rotate and the sprockets will be just doing their thing. You can move them anywhere. Just like a car can move up, down, left, right because that CV joint moves all over. Why would I want an ATV CV joint? Oh, cheaper? I mean, it needs to have the same strength as a car CV joint. But yeah, I mean... I guess I could look at different prices or whatever.